Nationosphere. Hello, dear viewers, and you're mostly welcome to this special edition of your program, The International Sphere. In this week's edition, I'm joined by the Kenyan High Commissioner to Tanzania, His Excellency Isaac Njenga Gatitu. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Absolutely. My <laughs> <laughs> uh, guess you're, you're mostly welcome here on this set, and I'm glad to uh, have you here on the set today as we are going to discuss uh, various issues uh, pertaining to uh, diplomatic ties between the two countries. We understand we have so many things that in common that we do share. And uh, of course, we are neighboring countries. And we started out uh, since then in the uh, East African community with three countries, that is Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. Yes. So we'll touch on all that. Uh, first of all, let me welcome you on the program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Agnes, for having me and uh, for welcoming me into the program International Sphere. And may I also take this opportunity to welcome you and your crew to the Kenya High Commission in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Asante sana. Asante. Uh, let's just begin our discussion by uh, trying to highlight on the issue that transpired some months back in Kenya. Uh, Mr. High Commissioner, if I may ask you, uh, what is the current situation in Kenya with all that has, had happened and it was all over within the social media, in the news, uh, concerning what the, the riot, I should put, maybe concerning the Gen Z, the new generation? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Agnes. Um, you're right. You know, as neighbors, you have every reason to be concerned when you hear noises in your neighbor's house, you may want to know are they noises of joy or noises of uh, sorrow or distress. And uh, yes, uh, you have rightfully put it in the last uh, a, few, a few weeks back or a few months back, we had uh, uh, demonstrations you know, by groups of people, but mainly by Generation Z, Gen Z. Yes. Uh, as we call them, this is a young generation of people from uh, a particular age, I think from about almost now, people born after uh, 1995 mm -hmm. to this age, that's the generation Z. And um, our constitution provides for picketing, for demonstration, for industrial action, for strikes in terms of expressing your views. It's in our constitution. Article 37. So they were very well within their rights. But the same constitution... So you mean that was the right thing for them to, to go about for demonstration? A demonstration, when you want to uh, express yourself, is provided for in the constitution. Uh -huh. However, mm -hmm. the constitution also guides how you should do it. It says you should, uh, you should assemble peacefully and unarmed. So we saw initially it started that way, but eventually uh, other elements came in, other criminal elements, and now it stopped being peaceful and it stopped being unarmed. Mm -hmm. Because when you have stones, when you have clubs, when you have uh, other uh, sorts of uh, weapons, then it becomes a different situation. Mm -hmm. So it moves from being a demonstration, picketing or, or uh, pressuring for something, into a rioter situation that mm -hmm. now endangers lives and livelihoods of people, people that's, and property. That's violence then. That is violence. Mm -hmm. And so the violence, of course, is, is, is not provided for yeah. in the constitution, and that one is dealt with according to the law. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, thank you. But very the situation much. now mm -hmm. is good, is calm. Uh, the grievances that were raised, which were genuine, like I said, had been addressed, and the president for the first time has engaged the, this new generation using variety of methods, mm -hmm. including uh, social media through the space. Uh, this is the first time we've seen a head of state actually addressing and engaging with his citizens yeah. in a forum like that, with attendance huge running into millions of people. Uh, he has also engaged them in town hall meetings, mm -hmm. exchanging views, exp explaining government programs, and taking questions from them without consequences. You say what you think is wrong with the way government is being done or leadership is, is executing their mandate, and he was responding. So it, uh, there are also a lot of positive things that have come out of this because it has put into, uh, it has enabled direct engagement between the leadership, particularly His Excellency the President, with his people. Mm -hmm. Thank yes. you very much for that productive insight. Yes. Uh, Mr. High Commissioner, talking about the two countries, that is Tanzania and Kenya, uh, talking of the bilateral ties between the two countries, we are talking about Tanzania and Kenya. What is the state so far? Because 
We also understand that uh, relations, apart from diplomatic uh, ties, but we had uh, relations, issues like um, common things that we share. We also, we are, we are neighbors and we all African countries. We are all Swahili speakers and things like that. Thank you, and you've asked a very good question because uh, it is true we are we are neighbors, and our relationship with between Kenya and Tanzania mm -hmm. did not start with the independence. Our relationship did not start with the coming on board of uh, East African Community as a as a group as we know it now. Our relationship has been there; it has been historical before the boundaries were there. You will realize that uh, between Kenya and Tanzania, we share one of the longest borders at least for the Kenyan side, over 740 kilometers of border. Mm, that is long. Now, this one also has different communities across the boundaries. Because, uh, you know, when the boundaries came after, uh, you know, the partition, the scramble partition of Africa and with colonization, mm -hmm. they did not respect that certain communities were religious. So we have a lot of communities across the borders. Many of them, I think for us, one of the huge, biggest number of communities that we share is with Tanzania. And I also think with Tanzania, it's almost the same thing. You know, many communities, the yeah. Digos, the Maasai, the Luos. Kambas, the Luos, yes. the Kurias. Uh, mm -hmm. and a closer relationship even with people like uh, people from Pemba. Mm -hmm. You know, now we have officially a Pemba community recognized as one of the communities of Kenya. In Mombasa? In Mombasa. Okay, great. Recognized as, as a community because of the long historical interaction. These people have lived there for long. They came from Pemba Island, but they are part of Kenyan community now. So they, they historical historically, we have come a long way. Uh, so we are family. We trade each other out of natural consequence. Because when you're neighbors, when you're friends, when you're communities, you will tend to trade with each other. Sometimes in form of butter trade, but now more formally in terms of the currencies and yeah. the modern trade that we see today. Mm -hmm. So that has been there. Our relationship has been strong. But sometimes, as many relationships are, when you interact a lot, that's mm -hmm. when also you have more issues between yourselves. Mm -hmm. People who don't interact a lot, tend to have very few issues among themselves. We don't expect Tanzania to have many issues with countries maybe in North Africa, you know, or uh, in West Africa, because they don't neighbor. But we are neighbors and we have a lot of interaction. Yes. So sometimes we have uh, issues that arise out of things, matters like trade, uh, as people seek new ways of doing trade or enhanced trade or new commodities come into the market and then the regulation comes in to say, how do we trade in this? How do we do this? How do we regulate this? So issues are there. But our relationship is strong. And you've, you've seen recently, particularly uh, the relationship between President Ruto and the, Her Excellency President Samia. Very true. You can see warmth and cordial and uh, very brotherly, sisterly relations mm -hmm. that exist. And when the relationship is good at that level, it is obviously even better with the people who are already relating anyway. So our relationship with Tanzania is good. Mm -hmm. We couldn't have asked for a better neighbor or a better <laughs> brother. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> so upon your submission of your credentials uh, to the United Republic of Tanzania to the State House uh, for uh, submitting your, your credentials to uh, the President of the United Republic of Tanzania, uh, Dr. Samia Slu Hassan, in the year 2022, I think I got that right? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's indeed. when you came to the country as yes. the head of mission here. Uh, what has been your highlight uh, in terms of areas of uh, uh, cooperation that you said, okay, this is what I'm going to stand for to make sure that this is done in a, in a, in a, in a, in a manner that we all benefit from both sides? Thank you. Thank you, Agnes. Now I have been in Tanzania for about two years. Mm -hmm. I presented my credentials in August of 2022. Uh, and what was foremost in my mind was uh, a, a number of things, mm -hmm. maybe three major ones. One, uh, like I've already said, Kenya and Tanzania have been relating. Yes. And sometimes we have issues among ourselves. One was to increase understanding and appreciation of one another. Make the our Tanzanian brothers appreciate and understand who, who their Kenyan colleagues are mm -hmm. by fostering more interaction, uh, more exchange programs at high level and even at ordinary mwana inchi mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. so that we can get to understand each other. Because some of the issues that we face uh, within the community or the region is a misunderstanding. People will believe the a Tanzanian or an average Tanzanian will believe, oh, Kenyans are like this. Mm -hmm. Our Kenyans, you know what we're in a gani. <laughs> and a Tanzanian, I mean, uh, that is 
a Tanzanian will believe a lot of Kenya, and the Kenyans also have what they mm. see as a stereotype of what the Tanzanian brothers are. So fostering that understanding, in our opinion, has helped to reduce some of the misconceptions we hold against each other. As brothers and sisters, as siblings, sometimes there is what is seen as sibling competition. Mm -hmm. You know, Tanzania wants to do this better than Kenya, Kenya wants to do this better than Tanzania, but this is what we would call normal banter between siblings, mm -hmm. or what you would call, mm -hmm. you know, yes. we, we, we will joke <laughs> about different things, yeah. but it shouldn't be something that goes to heart that inhibits proper relations and proper interactions or even trade. So that is our key thing, my, my key mission our goal was to foster understanding among us. And to a great extent, we have seen very high level visits exchanged between our countries. Mm -hmm. High level. Uh, President Rito has visited Tanzania possibly more than any other country that 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 yeah. is there. We have seen also President Samia visiting Kenya mm -hmm. almost more than any mm -hmm. other country within the East African region. So, so this we have achieved. We have also seen senior government officials interacting and exchanging, and we've had many forums, you know, either as a Ministry of Foreign Affairs in terms of looking at J, our, our Joint Commission of Cooperation, our agreements that are there, a review of where we are. We have seen a joint uh, trade, uh, joint technical committee on trade meeting in Kisumu, Kenya, hosted by Kenya, to look at the issues between Kenya and Tanzania in matters of trade. We have seen uh, a joint trade uh, committee meeting on matters of education here in Dar es Salaam, and many others on labor and many other areas. Yeah. So this, this we think to a great extent we have uh, managed to, yeah. to uh, managed to, to to get somewhere, but there is still more to be done so that the average Tanzanian, the average Kenyan, can get to appreciate that this neighbor, this brother. This sister that I have across the border is actually of great benefit to me. Mm -hmm. The second thing that we're looking at, I, I had uh, set my target on, is improvement in terms of trade. And how do we improve trade? Eliminate some of the issues that make trade difficult between ourselves. Mm -hmm. The non-tariff trade barriers, sometimes a regulatory policy yeah. by, by government. And these are the issues sometimes that you see in the media, you know. This has happened. There is a ban of this. There is a cancellation of this mm -hmm. license. There is a, a new regulation on this. And these things keep emerging. But like I said, because we interact a lot, we also expect the density of issues to be more. The person you interact a lot, you probably will have more issues with a closer relative, a sibling, a brother, a sister, and a sister than you would have with a distant relative mm. because you're together all the time. Yeah. So, so again, reduce this kind of, uh, you know, one, one unpredictability, you know, business needs to be predictable that we know the regulations are this or the tariffs are this. They don't keep changing all the time or mm. they don't change uh, at a whim, at a whim. Secondly, to have, uh, policies that encourage trade instead of limiting it. So that the, because we are together in the, in the free common market area of East Africa, mm -hmm. we foster trade by having policies that think, how do we enable? Because trade in itself is a good, uh, helps to enhance relations. Because if I'm trading with you, yeah. it is less likely that Mimi mm -hmm. to Gombana. Because we are trading, we are yeah. benefiting from yeah. each other. So if we can manage to do this, then that would be, would be easy. And the, thirdly is by ensuring that what we already share, Mm -hmm. The cultural heritage that you have mentioned. Yeah. We are both Swahili speakers. We have our dishes and traditions in large communities are similar. Uh, we have communities that are related across our border. To now anchor our relations on that, enhance it, uh, foster it, and grow it so that we can indeed become much more uh, united, much more. Uh, much more united and, 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 and have a better understanding if it were so that we can all grow together. Because besides business, mm -hmm. we're also family, you know, and yeah. you don't look at your, your brother, sister, just in terms of money, what I can I earn from it, but even just having good mm -hmm. relations. And these good relations also helps now to foster peace across the region, helps to foster peace in the, within and security within uh, communities that are bordering each other. And we have seen largely between our communities, we don't have issues with mm -hmm. us. Your Excellency, uh, uh, I'm glad that you've mentioned on the issue of uh, trade 
whereas now we talk about business. Very briefly, just to hear your view on that uh, concerning um, uh, Tanzania being Kenya's uh, business number one, right? Yes. And uh, now talking about what you have done already on the issue of trade, like uh, elimination of uh, trade barriers yes. or tariffs and yeah. uh, things like that. Now, what I need to hear from you is uh, how active are Kenyan, uh, Kenyan uh, investors to Tanzania and vice versa? All right, that is very good. I mean, we have, you, you rightfully said, we have done a, a lot of work in elimination of non-tariff mm -hmm. trade mm -hmm. barriers. Mm -hmm. And this has seen our trade grow tremendously for both of us. Yeah. Uh, both Kenya and Tanzania, almost doubling the figures that were there prior to uh, 2021 mm -hmm. when we had much more issues among yeah. our trade. We have a trade, you know, you know we have investments yeah. across each other's border. We trade with each other, but we also have investment. One of the areas where we, we have, uh, Kenya has invested heavily in Tanzania is in the financial sector. We are one of the leading you know, foreign direct investors in Tanzania in terms of in the financial services sector. We're talking about insurance, we're talking about banks, and uh, this come with benefit, yeah. you know, because when these banks come, when these institutions come, if the banks they are going to lend to the Tanzanian community, to the Tanzanian business people, to Tanzanian projects, and it helps. And many, a lot of this capital would be coming yeah. from Kenya, actually. So Tanzania benefits a great deal in that. And so we have a number of companies that, that do that. And many of them employing what we estimate to be close to, you know, over 60,000, almost 100,000 uh, Tanzanians in, in many of these uh, uh, organizations that are invested here. Mm -hmm. with, a, with, with a capital investment upwards of 2 billion, roughly 2 billion US dollars, which is a huge one. Yeah. We, we, I'm not so sure if there's any other country. If we are not number one, then probably number two in terms of foreign direct investment into Tanzania. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, Tanzanian companies have not invested so heavily in Kenya. When I came and my- And why is that? And that, yes, very good question. Mm -hmm. Because again, sometimes perception. Perception, yeah. It's just perception, mm -hmm. Agnes. Tanzanian companies can work in Kenya and compete in Kenya just like Kenyan companies. Our policies are very open. We, we treat East Africans just like a Kenyan citizen would be treated. You can acquire land, you can get a job as an East African student, I mean, an East African uh, uh, member. Yeah. So it is, the, and, and, and you operationalize mm -hmm. whatever you're doing there with a lot of ease. It's but just Mr. High Commissioner, you are here in the country, and uh, this is one of your uh, duties also to, to talk with the other part, which is Tanzania. Now, ad ad advising them and convincing them that this is what we have in Kenya. Why are you not coming in such massive uh, yes, numbers? In, yes, numbers. Yes, exactly. and, and, and I agree with you, Agnes. Mm -hmm. We have tried through the media. Mm -hmm. We have tried through engagement on various platforms. We need to do more. And you will be seeing us in the coming days doing much more yeah. in terms of engagement because we have done it in, in the media. Where I have gone to some medias where we even have live calls, people coming mm -hmm. in and yeah. asking, is it yeah. true what you're saying that me as a Tanzanian can just go and invest in Kenya? <laughs> and they are surprised, many yeah. of them, because they didn't know this. They didn't know, that they didn't yeah. know this happened. Mm. We, we will do more. Uh, in, in, in that area, in educating the people. We, we are working on a program how to do more. We have, of course, interactions with the, you know, uh, uh, Tanzania Private Sector mm -hmm. Foundation, yeah. you know, which is the equivalent of our Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and our Kenya Private Sector uh, Association. We, will, we, we want to foster more engagement. Mm -hmm. Already there exists agreements, MOU between Tanzania Investment Authority and Kenya Investment uh, Authority, Tanzania Investment Center and Kenya yeah. Investment Authority. Mm -hmm. But we want to do more, this to be translated into reality for people to know. So perception is the biggest thing, that people lack information and they are shy to do that. I have reached out to a number of financial sectors here, mm. uh, financial uh, sector players here, yeah. to tell them, why don't you invest in, in Kenya? You know, you, you're going down south. Why don't mm. you go to your neighbor who is next door exactly. and has a lot of potential for growth? Purchasing power is relatively higher in Kenya, within the region, you can be able to gain. But all that is not a doom and gloom. Quite recently, we have seen a number of companies now getting to invest there, one in uh, IT, but quite recently, we have seen a company called Amsom's Group, 
mm-hmm. of Tanzania. Yeah. And Amsom's group of Tanzania is a big company. Big company. It's yeah. a big company, you know, involved in oil, mm. in cement production. This is a group that has, I think, uh, you know, camel oil uh, and many others. Uh, oil comb and mm-hmm. many other in their in their basket. So investing in Kenya, buying and taking over, um, uh, you know, they're in the process of taking over majority shareholding in Bamburi Cement, our mm. biggest cement producer in Kenya and possibly the biggest in the region. And this is a comp- Tanzanian company. And we are happy to see this happen. Uh, we're encouraging more companies, you know, not to be shy, to invest in Kenya. Many Tanzanian products are already in the Kenyan market. So all that we need to do is this company to move in and establish more, 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 more presence. But let me say also something that uh, people sometimes don't seem to understand. And it's good we use this opportunity to make people understand. When you see Kenyan companies coming to Tanzania, yeah. the first thing as a Tanzanian, you should be very much appreciative. One, we are next door neighbors, yeah. so there is no language barrier, there is no cultural barrier, mm-hmm. so we can work together. So we, we tend to want an investor to be the person coming from Western countries, from Europe, from China, from other places, or from America. We should appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Because even if there is repatriation of capital, it's going next door, and you, this money will keep circulating in the region. But secondly, and most important, this investor comes and creates jobs for locals. Mm-hmm. So the fact that we have more Kenyan companies operating in Tanzania is a gain to Tanzania because it means that these companies are employing more Tanzanians. Exactly. No, more Tanzanians are able to get jobs. So mm-hmm. we should, as a people, welcome this kind of investment, just like we welcome investors to come to Kenya so that they can also create jobs for people in Kenya, whether they are coming from the neighbor, the neighboring countries like uh, Tanzania or, uh, or across. So these, these are some of the things that uh, may be the work that is cut out for mm-hmm. us to mm-hmm. educate the people more mm-hmm. and uh, to use various media. To, to reach out to the people, to encourage them to come and, and, and invest, to stop being shy. Uh, Kenya is a market just like any other, but mm-hmm. just, but, but, but more importantly, uh, beyond any other, it is a market with a great potential for growth because in many sectors, you will find that there is a certain level of maturity. So your investment mm-hmm. will find a good ground. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, now talking of the uh, EAC, that is the East African uh, Community, uh, Kenya and Tanzania are the both strong members of uh, uh, the EAC because I, I might call them that they're the founders of yes. the EAC, yes, yes. of course, with Uganda all together. Uh, talking of um, the EAC, how do the common population uh, benefit from the objectives and initia- initiations of uh, the EAC? And of course, how do you see the future of the integration of the EAC uh, with the projection of five more years to come? Because now we have uh, eight members already with Somalia in. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you, you're right that uh, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania are the founders yes. of EAC. And, uh, but you know, what many people don't seem to realize, EAC, the journey of EAC did not begin just at our independence. Mm. This journey began a long time ago during the colonial days. And there was a certain form of East African Federation then mm-hmm. operating. Uh, first, between Kenya and U- Uganda because of the railway line. Yeah. And at some point, we were using basically the same currency, you know. And there was a plan to have a monetary board. Yeah that would now be able to deal with uh, our currency of East Africa as a shilling. So this dream is just continuing, that we'll probably have a common uh, currency by the year 2031, according to the new projection. Mm -hmm. But our common people have not understood the benefit in ESC, unfortunately. Common Wanainchi may not understand what does e, what is EAC benefiting them. Exactly. In fact, some of them will, would want to think, Kila mtu wafanya mambo yake. <laughs> but when you have an integrated economy, you have a bigger market for your produce. For example, uh, in days past, Kenya has bought a lot of raw material from Tanzania, mm-hmm. particularly in terms of food. Maize, then we go and uh, produce in it uh, maize flour, mm-hmm. uh, unga wa ugali, yeah. and then mm-hmm. animal feeds and other things. And if I'm to say, when we do this, the person who benefits, I mean, everybody benefits across mm-hmm. the value chain. Mm. But it begins with the farmer in Mbea, 
in Iringa in a song way benefiting from money that is coming from Kenya. And the reason for this is because these goods will go without being charged duty, it is not so costly for mm -hmm. Kenyan traders to come and buy here. Mm -hmm. So that is the benefit of being in a place like oh, this. Okay. Goods and services, it's possible. It's possible for Tanzanian traders, for example, to get goods from Kenya and, and, and sell to their people here. So you get, the bigger the market, the, the, the it shows, and research has shown this, that the lives, and livelihoods of people improve. If you look at uh, Europe, trade between mm. among themselves in EU is over 70%. You look at the Americas, they have trade among what is called NAFTA, mm -hmm. which is a free trade area. You have Asian countries, but Africa and is low, but even EAC is very low, at about 15% only of us trading with each other. So we trade more with China and India than we trade with each other. Mm -hmm. And where does that leave our people? It me leaves our people not having the money circulating within the region. So for Kenya, we prefer to buy our maize from Tanzania than being our, buying our maize from Mexico, for example. Because this money will remain here, it will circulate, and it eventually will, when we are selling goods here, these people will also be able to buy our goods. So we build each other. Mm -hmm. this, this is something that needs to be cascaded down. Communication needs to go down to the common person to understand the benefit of being in a common market area so that they can take advantage of it. In fact, if I was to be asked, even in schools, whether we are learning civic education, whatever, it should be introduced, or even uh, economics, it should be introduced, the benefit you can drive, derive from a common market mm -hmm. area that is East Africa. So we have not taken full advantage of it. Uh, also, the architecture of East African community is such that you find certain things are not working out the way they should work out. We have had, had delay in having a common currency. This would have helped us so that when I'm purchasing goods from Tanzania, we don't have to do currency conversion. I can just buy with a shilling that is the East African shilling mm -hmm. and, and, ev and everything goes on well. But now you find that even when people are traveling across the border, you have to co you convert sometimes your money into yes. dollars, then come here and change it again. It really doesn't make sense for us to trade even in foreign currency for mm -hmm. goods that we are able to do it. Because our currency conversion is not as efficient. So common currency would help. But how many of our people are aware of it and how is it even being affected? Very few people. So these are the things that we need also ourselves, our, the, our media houses, uh, government and civil servants, our academia to educate our people about this benefit because this is a benefit to all of us and all of us will be able to grow together. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you very much for that intense uh, explanation. Now, uh, Mr. High Commissioner, I have uh, some details here that is the Mobius Motors, you're aware of this, yes. yeah? that uh, was established since uh, 2010 in Kenya yes, yes. that uh, specializes in uh, designing and manufacturing uh, vehicles that can, can, can dominate now within the African market. How has this, uh, of course, these, these, these are, 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 are cheap, but of course, efficient uh, vehicles that are being used. How has this impacted the, 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 the import, uh, import, imported uh, market, importing market uh, within the, the, the East African uh, community? Because, uh, we have witnessed recently in Uganda also, they've come with something new concerning that. So with Kenya, that started out since 2010. Yes. yes. Uh, what is your take on that? Um, there, have been a ch there have been some challenges in that mm -hmm. sector, mm -hmm. un unfortunately. Okay. And uh, Mobius uh, company mm -hmm. was facing some, some challenges. And um, this is common to business, you know, depending on what uh, your projection of the yeah. market yeah. and the, the cost the of cost, production yeah. and uh, where we have seen companies grow particularly companies that dominate the african market but some of this is because out of having been in production for a long time they have uh, produce efficiency because of the scale that they are producing because scale actually does bring efficiency mm -hmm. and that's the same thing i was talking about when you have a bigger yeah. market mm -hmm. then you are able to produce at scale then your costs go down and the product is getting to the consumer at a cheaper price so this this uh, companies that are indigenous in our areas tend to face that kind of competition from the motor vehicles manufactured elsewhere because those ones coming from elsewhere, particularly for the bottom and middle segment, the people are more conscious about 
price. Mm -hmm. They are more price sensitive. Yeah. And those vehicles now, because of the scale and the, the fact that those brands have established themselves, they tend to, to, to find a bigger market. Mm -hmm. And that is what has uh, possibly impacted uh, Mobius. Because even if you look at the Ken Tanzanian roads, you don't find many of them here. Yeah. Uh, Kenyan roads, of course, there are a few. So with, 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 with the bigger market and scale, and because it's regionally produced, which means now it does not attract uh, certain duties and tariffs, that vehicle should be lower. Uh, I know they had uh, declared that the operations were coming to an end, but uh, there has been a change. There is a new investor on board and they are going to be able to restructure maybe what they are doing and they continue operating and hopefully uh, maybe even with a new model that will enable them to gain market share. But let me say this, this should be something that we should be able to pride ourselves mm -hmm. as Africans and people in this region that we can have indigenous made products that we can also use in the region and also export. We should not just be consumers of things being done from elsewhere, you know, even matchboxes, even toothpicks, things that are very simple. And if you go back to the history of this region, you will find a few years ago, we used mm -hmm. to manufacture quite a lot of things, mm -hmm. including things like, mot uh, you know, uh, motorbikes, moto motorcycles. Motorcycles, yeah. Yeah, by scaling. Mm -hmm. Now we are importing such kind of things. And yet we had industries mm -hmm. in places like Arusha that were doing quite a lot. We had uh, industries here that were assembling radios yeah. for, the, for, the, for the market. So, so this is something that should challenge us, that why are we not able to do, why have we become a consumer market mm -hmm. and find ways. So we are happy to see it happening in Uganda. We are happy to see other products coming mm -hmm. from elsewhere, but we as East Africans need to think more about what is it that we can produce. And because we have a market that is huge, you've mentioned, yeah. you know, eight countries now, yeah. that we should be able now to take advantage because that is the purpose of a market. Mm -hmm. So that people can come and set up a company even in Tanzania here knowing that I will be able to export as far as South Sudan with ease. That makes the investment uh, more sensible and they can invest more. Mm -hmm. yes. um, Mr. High Commissioner, we are running out of time, but very briefly, uh, let's highlight on this is again taking you back to East African community, talking of uh, Tanzania and Kenya as main Swahili speakers. How has the East African uh, uh, community you, Kenya and Tanzania, as members of the East African community, forging ahead, fostering that Tanzania uh, Swahili language is being taught in schools within the East African member states. You know, you know uh, one thing that we have, uh, you, you rightly put it, in East Africa, one of our operating languages mm -hmm. is Swahili. Swahili, yes. Of course, we have a few other languages that are there, but one of our main operating languages is Swahili. Mm -hmm. And a few others are coming on board. Of course, now we also have French because some of our colleagues who have joined us are French speakers and some of the other countries are not very good Swahili speakers. Yes, but Mr. High Commissioner, being spoken, uh, being a, 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 an official language within the, the, the East African community is not enough. Then what about the, the, the members within the, the East African community now? using this language within their countries, within, within the curriculum of their schools. That is important. Yeah. That is important. And I was going to go there because mm -hmm. even the members who have joined us and are not uh, natural Swahili speakers, mm -hmm. like let's say Somalia, we, the Federal yeah. Republic of Somalia, which has joined us, uh, DRC, parts of DRC speak Swahili. The Eastern DRC, they speak Swahili. Mm -hmm. It may be a different mm -hmm. variation of Swahili, but they speak Swahili. But the other countries like uh, like Somalia or even South Sudan who don't speak Swahili, apart from those who have interacted with mm -hmm. the Tanzania, I mean, with the Kenya and Uganda mainly, mm -hmm. because as being neighbors, we are beginning to see positive results with Swahili in parts of uh, Southern Africa countries, both uh, Botswana, South Africa, Namibia, introducing it in their school curriculum. Uh, I know you know in, in Namibia as well; they even have it as a uh, uh, a language that is spoken, I mean, is taught in university. Mm -hmm. I was a member, I, I mean, I served in Namibia as high commissioner, so I'm aware of that. South Africa have introduced it in their school curriculum. So this is something that we should pride ourselves and push it. And then we have the Swahili cost that mm -hmm. exists all the way down to Mozambique, that many of them are also Swahili speakers. speakers they may not exactly. be members of the East mm. African community, but they are Swahili speakers. When you go to a, a, the country like the Union of Comoros, they speak in Gazija, which is not very far from Swahili. Mm -hmm. We can extend the influence of Swahili because Swahili now is seen as one of the languages spoken by majority of people mm -hmm. in Africa. 
and that's why it has become an AU language. But the push should be to make Swahili now a UN language. Mm -hmm. Grow it because that is our identity, that is our culture, and that defines us. The culture of our people is defined by the yes. language they speak, the food they eat, and some of their traditions. Mm -hmm. And Swahili is an important part. But talking about East Africa, I think it is a, a big miss on our part that this East African uh, story is not being pushed and education is not being pushed in our primary schools, secondary schools. It should be a compulsory introduction in all these institutions if we want to bring homogeneity. Because when you speak in the same language, it is very easy for you to interact and understand each other better. So mm -hmm. I agree with you. Maybe not enough is being done. Yeah. And this is a matter that we need to keep raising. And myself as a High Commissioner of yeah. Kenya, together when I meet with my colleagues, mm -hmm. ambassadors representing countries yes. from East Africa, mm -hmm. is a matter that I would be willing to push. Because we talk about it, but no more action needs to be done. And let me finally say, some of the books that we read in school when we were growing up, were books like pe by people like uh, Shaban Roberts. Yes. You know, in Kenya, maybe we thought Shaban Roberts is a Kenyan until later you realize he's from Tanzania. <laughs> and vice versa, many books also that yeah. were written by Kenyan scholars yes. in Swahili mm -hmm. that were read across the board. Mm -hmm. So this is the contribution that we should be able to share this knowledge that we possess already within the region mm -hmm. for the benefit of our people. And uh, finally to say, there is a, Kenya, a famous Kenyan author called Ngugi Wathiong. Ngugi Wathiongo is well renowned and mm -hmm. he bought some of the books that he, he later in later years in the mother tongue, vernacular, in Kikuyu language. And his reasoning was mm -hmm. this, that people understand matters better. Intellectual, intellectual capacity is enhanced or, or, or uh, brought out better when you speak in indigenous language. So sometimes people imagine that when you speak in Swahili, then you're not educated. <laughs> they define That's education not. as being able to speak mm. in French mm. and being able to express yourself in, in English. English. Yet we yeah. know that is not true. not true. A lot of knowledge is possessed even within our common languages. And that fosters great understanding. And studies have shown, and at least the ones I've seen in Kenya, that children who start with those kind of languages have a better understanding later in life. So mm -hmm. let us promote our Kiswahili. To Kitunze Kiswahili Chetra. Asante sana. <laughs> My last question but not least uh, that uh, talking about the man of the moment, yes. Honorable Raila Odinga, yes. who has just launched his uh, com AU campaign uh, at the State House in Kenya. Yes. And it was uh, officially launched by the President of the Republic of Kenya, yes. uh, Honorable William Ruto. So um, this seems to be a milestone uh, to him, and of course, not only him, Kenyans, and of course, Africa. Yes. Uh, what is your uh, comment on that? First of all, Agnes, let me say this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, what we historically know within the region is that uh, Raila Odinga has been a leader in opposition. And uh, he's been a presidential candidate and he's been in uh, opposition what in politics for a long time. Yeah, for a long time. A good part yeah. of it has also been in opposition politics. Mm -hmm. But he has also served in government as yes. prime minister yeah. and uh, minister in various mm -hmm. dockets. When I was speaking with him last, he was around here about a month or two months ago, he was telling me about his relationship with the late President uh, Magufuli. Magufuli. And he yeah. said that when they served together both as ministers of public works and yeah. roads, some of the things he went to do in Kenya, he actually saw from Magufuli, you know, expansion of roads, you know. So, so we, we learn from each yeah. other. And he says that enhanced their relations very much with President Magufuli. Of course, he enjoys good relations with the President Samia Suluo Hassan. And uh, that's why she went in person to endorse his candidature for AU. So this is a towering statesman. Raila has a number of qualities that you just cannot ignore. One, this is a person who has tenacity. In terms of when he pursues something, he can pursue it relentlessly to a, a, a logical conclusion. Mm -hmm. That is him. He also has the capacity, sometimes even when he feels that certain things that have been done to him have not been fair, to forgive and forge alliances and move forward. Mm -hmm. We saw Raila uh, forging an alliance after a bitter election process with President, uh, the late President Mwai Kibaki. Uh, His Excellency, uh, former President Jakaya Kikwete was, was there among the people who were helping to bring them together. And also uh, our 
uh, former president retired uh, Benjamin Mkapa Mzee Mkapa was also there mm -hmm. he formed that he also came together with president Uhuru Kenyatta yeah. after fighting viciously in an election so the, he he, mag, he 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 impersonifies that siasa sio wadui competition yeah. mashindano sio wadui yes. and he embraces that now quite recently he was a biggest challenger and rival to President William Ruto. And we see maturity of politics, even their photo together. Mm. President Ruto endorsing him and launching his bid is maturity in politics that we can compete, but we don't have to differ and we don't have to be enemies. And Raila has also personified this as a person that you can rise above competition. You can rise above challenges and become a statesman mm -hmm. for the good of the country and of the region. Let me say this. African Union and Africa as a whole will be very lucky to have Raila Molodinga as the chairman mm. of AUC for a number of reasons. He has experienced and has lived this life. He has personified reconciliation. And Africa today is dogged with a lot of conflict mm -hmm. in various parts of Africa. Mm -hmm. And this conflict actually slows down development, but in some cases disrupts livelihoods completely and even takes away life. You need a person who is seasoned in this kind of thing. And he has participated as a peacekeeper, negotiating in various parts of Africa to bring uh, people together. Secondly, he has a wide understanding mm. of the issues that bedevil Africa. From across the region, his knowledge is rich from across the region. And he has networks and contacts at highest level. Mm -hmm. So he has the required gravitas to sit in a room and speak to heads of states and tell them this is the way I propose or we see that Africa can be able to get out of the many challenges. You know, you know, President uh, Museveni said something very fundamental mm. during the launch. And he said, this is not a job for somebody who is looking for a job. Kwamba huna ajira, unatafuta ajira. Ama unataka kupandanga. It's a job for somebody who wants to give sacrificially. Somebody mm -hmm. who is not looking for a paycheck yeah. or a bigger salary mm -hmm. for somebody who wants to give. Mm -hmm. It, it is a, sense, because yeah. it's a very it's a very the the, the responsibility mm -hmm. are huge, and you need somebody also who will uh, who would elicit respect from other, from heads of states mm -hmm. to listen to, to listen and to. to understand and to engage with. It's not just a job for anybody. And finally, let me say this: President, uh, I mean uh, President Ruto showed a great deal of maturity mm -hmm. by endorsing the candidature. Mm -hmm but also the African leaders who came, East African leaders who came. President Sulu, Samir, Samir Sulu yes. uh, Hassan was there in person. President Museveni was there. Uh, former President Jakaya Merisho Kikwete was there to say that, we, yes, we agree that yeah, this agree, man yeah. fits the profile. President, former President Obas, Obasanjo was there. Mm -hmm. uh, and a few other leaders, you know, Prime Minister of Burundi, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs for So he for has Rwanda. a good backing then. Yeah? That, that already yeah, shows yeah, that these that are shows. people who know him. They, he doesn't need introduction on the continent. He he's a, Some of the candidates who are there, with tremendous respect to mm. them, some of them you may not even know their names. Yeah. You may not even remember their names if you're told. Mm -hmm. So Raila fits the profile, and I think the region will benefit from having somebody from the region of that stature because it's the time for Eastern African region. So it shouldn't be a position that we give just to anybody yeah. for the sake of a job. But the African continent will benefit from the wealth of experience of this man and the, the vision that he carries. He's a Pan-Africanist. Yes. And as he says, a, a Pan-Optimist uh, an, um, pan or an Afro-Optimist because he believes in a bright future for Africa. If you listen to him, you will be convinced that this is the right person for the job. Your Excellency, I thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank Asante you very San. much, Agnes. Asante thank you. San. Asante San. Well, dear viewers, that was all for this edition of your program, The International Sphere. Just remember, today on the set, I was joined by the Kenyan High Commissioner to Tanzania, His Excellency Isaac Njenga Gatitu. From me, your host, Agnes Tuniga, I thank you very much for being with us. Till next time, it's goodbye.